What's going on, everybody? C4 here, and welcome back to the 32 Team 7 Round Mock Draft Series. Truth be told, um, this week it's been pretty much all mock draft uploads because today, uh, Thursday, I haven't had internet all week. My internet uh, modem like blew up Monday. It took them three days to get to me. So luckily, I had a bunch of mock drafts like pre-uploaded and stuff. So I didn't, you know, the algorithm didn't punish me for missing daily uploads. But I already had, I had like a bunch of plans to start the new franchise series, do the trailers and all that stuff. And because I've had no internet, all that stuff's kind of got pushed behind. So it literally just got connected a couple minutes ago. I'm gonna get this mock draft out for you guys today, and then tomorrow will be it'll be a nice little weekend where we're gonna be able to get back to that balance that I promised you, where it's not just gonna turn to like a goddamn mock draft channel. Even though I'm not playing MLB, which is what everyone else is doing right now, I do have some exciting, as exciting as this late in the Madden process, exciting Madden content uh, dropping very, very soon that just kind of got put on hold due to my modem dying. So today we are going to be taking a look, though, at the team with the number 10 pick in the first round in the Denver Broncos. And without further ado, at pick number 10 in the first round, I have them selecting Drew Locke, quarterback from Missouri. Now, for the longest time, I have had the Denver Broncos not going QB here. I just think, like, I was like, you know what? They're, they're going to wait. They're not going to overdraft for a quarterback. The more and more I think about it, though, the more and more Drew Locke is, like, the prototypical John Elway quarterback. And the scenario that they're setting themselves up right now with their current depth chart by bringing in Joe Flacco, like, Flacco is the ultimate bridge quarterback right now. In, in like this is how I'm envisioning because Flacco is kind of what John Elway wants in a quarterback: big, tall, huge arm. But clearly, you know, he is what he is. He, he's peaked in the NFL, and he, he's he's just a solid, capable spot gap type quarterback. So why not go out and get your franchise? Now, personally, if I'm just looking at this from a value standpoint, I think if Denver could get Drew Locke in the second round at pick 41, like that would be ideal. But there's a good chance that he won't be there, or, or a chance that if he does slip past. You know, the first 15, like really Washington at 15 is probably the last team that could be considering getting a quarterback. That if he slips past that, you're going to have teams that pass on a QB that kind of need a QB uh, trading up and stuff like that. And that becomes a big time gamble. So I think if you're seeing at 10, Drew Luck at 10, it's not the biggest reach, you know, but it's also a little bit of a reach. But knowing what John Elway wants in a QB, is it really? Um, so knowing that you have Joe Flacco as a bridge, I mean, when you look at Drew Locke, a guy that has a lot of potential, and I, I think by having Joe Flacco there, you have Drew Locke on the bench and learn, develop, and grow a little bit as a rookie. Give him that redshirt season, and I think that's probably best case scenario for him to find some success in the National Football League is to go to a spot like that. So, I mean, can John Elway finally get it right? We've seen him get wrong a couple times. I guess you could say Case Keenum was wrong. Uh, obviously, Paxton Lynch, when he talked about drafting a quarterback high, that was kind of wrong. Uh, it really hasn't had much of success since he got Peyton Manning in a trade from the Colts. So can Drew Locke finally be John Elway's guy at quarterback? I think at pick 10, they're going to make that selection. Like I said, this is where I, when I do my mock draft series, I try my best to combine what I think a team should do and what I think they will do and try to try to find like middle ground and maybe suggest something different if I truly believe they'll go somewhere different or, you know, accept defeat and go with what I think the team will actually do. And I feel like that's the case here. If I'm the Denver Broncos, I'm not reaching for a quarterback at pick 10, but I think how they have built their team up right now by bringing in Joe Flacco, it's very, very unlikely that they'll get Drew Locke on the swing of things into the second round. I don't necessarily know if they're going to get, you know, wait Tyree Jackson a little bit later. So I feel like best case scenario is have them go Drew Locke at 10 for this mock draft for you guys today. And then for the rest of the draft, try to hit home runs and fill in the rest of the needs for this team. So then going into the second round at pick 41, I was selecting Marquise Hollywood Brown, wide receiver from Oklahoma. He is the best deep threat wide receiver in this class. I think because of his size concerns, because he is very, very small human being, he will just go into round two. He'll slip a little bit just out of round one. Uh, I mean, if a team that desperately just needs a pure deep threat at the tail end of the first round. I mean, I'm looking at like the, you know, the Baltimore Ravens really need a wide receiver, but they don't just need like a pure deep threat. They had that in John Brown last year, and it didn't really solve a lot of things. I think they need to more so find that complete wide receiver. And then, you, can, you know, some other teams that could go for a deep threat. Hey, if something big happens with Tyreek Hill and the Kansas City Chiefs, you never know. Between now and the draft, they might reach and, and get Marquise Brown because if Tyreek's going to be kicked off the team or whatever's going on with that whole scenario. But for right now for this mock, at 41, he was still there for the Denver Broncos. And I think when you look at the current core of wide receivers, they got Cortland Sutton. That was a very nice pickup last year. You got Emmanuel Sanders, who's definitely getting over the hill. You brought in Deshaun Hamilton, who's much more of a slot guy. 
Uh, Hollywood Brown offers a dimension to this offense that they don't really have. And if Drew Locke is drafted in the first round as your eventual starter, you need that deep threat that can utilize his arm talent. And right now, I don't really think they have that on the roster, but bringing in a guy like Hollywood Brown, who can probably pick up a thing or two from Emmanuel Sanders, who's definitely an established veteran who, in his prime, was kind of the style of receiver that Hollywood Brown is and was. You know, I, I think it's a very favorable situation, and a guy like Hollywood Brown would give a lot of value minutes to that offense as a rookie. Moving into the third round at pick 71, I was selecting Joan Williams, cornerback from Vanderbilt. I will state, but I, you know, I, I, I hate teams that are getting defensive head coaches just because of the way the NFL is going. I, I think it's actually counterintuitive. But if you had to give a DC a job, I think Vic Fangio would be at the top of that list. I don't like what he's doing, but he, you know, you, you're trying to rebuild the defense here a little bit piece by piece, and it's definitely is a rebuilding secondary. So Joan Williams, I think, could come in right away and add some much needed youth to the top end because you got. Uh, Chris Harris, you got Kareem Jackson. They're over the hill. Like those, those are guys that still can play, but you're not gonna get like their best football is not ahead of them. I'm gonna say you have maybe two good years, one good year left between Chris Harris and Jackson. There's not a lot of youth there. You get Yaidim, who's all right. You brought in Bryce Callahan, who was Fangio's guy in Chicago. That's nice, and he's you know he's on the right side of 30. But for outside corners, you're getting up there in age a little bit. I think it's time to add another youth product. And when you get Joe Williams, I think. When you're trying to grade him, he has first round upside, second round technique, and third round athlete. He did not test particularly well, but he's a long rangy corner at six foot three. He's a press cover, great in run support. I think there's multitude of ways that Vic Fangio can use Joan Williams as a rookie, and I feel like the third round, because of athletic limitations, is a good spot to have him going. So just like that, that is a big time improvement here for the Denver Broncos. And I think with Joan Williams, you get a little bit upside that hey, if things don't work out for him corner, or you might find out hey, he's a better safety than he is a corner. Let's flex him out there to safety. I think he's a versatile player for that secondary, and Vic Fangio will be able to get the most out of him. Moving into the fourth round, I pick 125. I was think Daylon Mack, a nose tackle from Texas A&M. Mack is an explosive nose tackle. He's the second best, I think, in this class after Dexter Lawrence. But we do know nose tackles slip. Like, I remember Andrew Billings a couple years ago at a Baylor. I thought he was a first-round talent, but he was a clear nose tackle. He went in, like, the fourth round fifth round something like that to the Cincinnati Bengals so I just feel like it is a position that's very very undervalued but we look at the nose tackle spot for the Denver Broncos right now who, who do they have you have Pecco who's still not re-signed you know you got like the website I'm using had Shelby Harris there but he's definitely not a nose tackle so I, I just look at that thing right now you need a nose tackle the guy like Daylon Mack in the fourth round he could start day one he could very well start day one at nose tackle that is just ridiculous value here for the Denver Broncos trying to get something like that. And, you know, Fangio gets a Mac. He gets his, he had his Mac in Chicago for one year, and now he gets his Mac in Denver for multiple of years. Moving into the fifth round, we have two fifth round picks. First up at 148, I'm selecting Terrell Hanks, linebacker from New Mexico State. A lot of people, a lot of scouts have been calling him the Darius Leonard of this year's draft class due to his build, his long, lengthy arms. Uh, but he did have an off combine, his 40-yard dash. I think he had the worst 40-yard dash for linebackers. There was a report that he pulled up. I, I didn't really see the pull up, but... They, they, you know, the official kind of asterisk that goes next to his 40-yard dash time was that he had an injury, um, and I have no reports yet of his pro day or anything like that. So I'm going to assume it was because on tape he definitely does not look like a super slow linebacker. He's a converted defensive back, so he has great sideline to sideline range and coverage ability. And when you look at the Denver Broncos, they just recently released Brandon Marshall. So there is a spot up for grabs there when you look at the inside of their linebacking core. Uh, you have Josie Jewell, the pick from Iowa last year. He could very well take over that spot. I thought that was a really nice pickup there. But I think if you want to get at least... You know, a different type of athlete, different style of linebacker. Joel's that old school type style, whereas Terrell Hanks is a little bit more modern. I think I think that's great value there in the fifth round. You know you're going to get good special team ability right away from Hanks. You know he's going to crack the 53. I think he instantly adds a lot more to that inside linebacking competition to find the, uh, the next starter next to uh, Todd Davis there in the inside. Going to the second fifth round pick at 156, I'm selecting Rosh Pierschbacher, the center from Alabama. He is your prototypical run-blocking first-type center. With Matt Paradis leaving via free agency, they really do need to add some competition to the interior of that offensive line. And really, Pierschbacher, he's your prototypical not first-round Alabama offensive lineman. It feels like if you're an Alabama offensive lineman, you're going out there in the first round, or you're probably going to go in day three somewhere where you're, your technique is usually pretty powerful, but you're somewhat a limited athlete, and your ceiling is pretty much capped up as maybe 
a depth offensive lineman, but I think a guy like Pierce Parker does have a lot of upside. He played a lot of valuable minutes for Alabama, and he obviously proven as a high-level run blocker, which when you look at probably the strength right now of the Denver Broncos, it is running the ball with Philip Lindsley. So I think a guy like Pierce Parker in the fifth round, the fact that you get a guy that I think can compete for that final 53, and hell, even compete for that starting center gig is really, really good value. Moving into the sixth round at pick 182, I have the selecting Ole Udo. Offensive lineman from Elon. He is a massive offensive line prospect, 6'6", 330-ish pounds, who is as raw as a player because he's from a very, very small school. I couldn't even tell you where that school is, but a lot of experts say with that size that he has the athletic talent necessary that you get him a great O-line coach, you're going to be able to coach him up and get him to be a starter to year two, year three, somewhere in that range. And I feel like when you look at the Denver Broncos, they have had some pretty good luck developing later round tackles, later round guards. And I mean, you could probably view Udo as either one of those spots. So unfortunately, you know, you never want to say, and I, and I tried to best not have picks say, oh, they're clearly going to a practice squad, but he could very well be a practice squad candidate if he can't catch on quick in training camp, but the potential and ceiling is so very high, I think it is worth the risk here of a six-round pick for the Denver Broncos because when you look at the tackle position, depth currently isn't something they have. You have Garrett Bowles, you have um, Jawan James coming over from the Miami Dolphins, but other than that, you don't have much depth at all at that tackle spot, so I think a guy like Udo could get that job done. And, and find a way onto the final 53. But his ceiling is very, very high. Just don't be surprised if you do find a way that Udo ends up getting drafted by the Denver Broncos if he goes to the practice squad. And then finishing up here in the seventh round at pick 237, Island selecting Porter Gustin, outside linebacker from USC. He's a very talented player. At times, looked like, you know, maybe a first round, probably more so a second or third round pick throughout his career at USC. But he has had a very, very bad injury history, multiple injuries that have cost him a lot of time here at USC. But if he does and can stay healthy, I honestly think he could make the final 53 here as rotational edge depth behind Von Miller behind Bradley Chubb. I mean, definitely get in there with Jeff Holland. I thought that was an exceptional pick, but they'd kind of, if you're looking for a depth rotational, need that guy that can take that step and take on Shane Ray's role. And I think a guy like Porter Gustin, if he could say healthy, will surprise a lot of people in the seventh round and stick on the back end of the Denver Broncos final 53. Plus he is a tremendous athlete and you'll get some special teams ability out of him. So there you go, guys. That is the seven-round mock draft here for the Denver Broncos. Bronco fans definitely want to hear what you think, especially because we went Drew Locke in the first round. I know that's not a popular pick. And I've already come out and said, if I was Denver, I probably wouldn't do that. But kind of had to side with my gut on this one and how I think Denver will draft. And with the Joe Flacco signing, kind of writing on the roll that they will go and grab a quarterback at some point early this draft. And if they want Drew Locke, who's that John Elway prototype, you're probably going to have to pick him at 10. Uh, yeah, and, and I just want to follow up. Like I said, my internet situation is good now. We're good now, for now. So uh, expect this weekend to be some special new content will be dropped on the channel. So I hope you guys do enjoy that as well. So that is it for today. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.